Oh, you thought because you just saw a very dramatic single promo, you're not going to get any trash? <coughs> trash. Hello, everyone. Welcome back <laughs> to a very dramatic single promo. <laughs> Before I get into this video, yes, you saw it right. Yes, it's actually happening. I will release my first single, Naomi, on June 11th. <laughs> Yes, she's called Naomi. Is it a little bit narcissistic? Yes. But is it also a queen move? Yes. I honestly have been waiting for this day. I feel like you also have been waiting for this day a little bit. So it would mean the world to me if you could stream the fuck out of this song. Of course, you can also pre-order the single. The link is in my description. We're doing the full program. We're doing all of it. Oh my god, I just really hope you're gonna like the song. This is so much pressure because I've been wanting to do music for so long freaking long this is literally my biggest and my most important project i've ever done in my life and it literally means the world to me so no pressure <laughs> all right let's get into the video shall we so yes i did it again i ate like famous mukbangers for seven days straight part two bitch and my buddy did not like this part two not at all <laughs> if you thought the first part was bad <laughs> So yeah, this is part two of this series. You can, of course, watch part one as well, if you like. But if you didn't watch part one and you don't want to watch it for some reason, then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do in this video. I will eat like famous mukbangers for seven days straight. I mean, we all know our mukbangers. Do we? I feel like we do. Do you? Mukbangs are eating shows and they exist on YouTube. I think it's mukbangers. Right? Mokbangers. Like always, I will try to cut the eating noises down as much as possible. And if you will hear eating noises, then I will give you a little warning before that. Don't worry about it. So let's get into this. Let's hope my body will survive. I mean, it did survive, but barely. <laughs> so the first thing I'm gonna be eating is something very light. I would say something very easy. And I saw Mini Eats eat these cold soba noodles. So basically you have your buckwheat soba noodles and your soba dipping base and everything is cold and then you just dip your soba noodles into the soba base i also quickly want to say that i saw this on tiktok too i follow this girl lee margie and she ate it a lot in her tiktoks and this is what kind of really made me want to eat this so first i bought these buckwheat soba noodles and also the soba base the soba noodles i could just get at my local asian supermarket but the base was kind of hard to find i had to order it online i just cooked my noodles super easy super quick and then i put them under cold water right after i cooked them and also added some ice cubes so it's extra cold. Then I poured the soba base into this plate bowl. <laughs> I also put some ice cubes in there because I also want this to be super cold. I also put some spring onion in there and normally you're also supposed to put some grated daikon in there which is a Japanese radish. I couldn't find the Japanese radish here so I just left it out. I also added some wasabi right there. I maybe added a little bit too much though. <laughs> Be careful with that. And that's actually already it. You have your noodles, you have your dipping sauce. I also put a little bit of water into the soba base because I was afraid it's too salty. But I quickly realized that it was not salty enough and I just kept on adding more of the base. That's why I also didn't like it at the beginning because it was just too weak, too flavorless. But when I added more of the base, then it was totally yummy. Loved it. It was actually kind of weird eating noodles cold. I gotta admit, I never did it before, but it was really bomb. Just gotta get used to that and then slurp that shit up. At some point I was even like, I need the full flavor and then I just put all of my leftover noodles into the base. <laughs> and then I just had this little soup, you know. It was great. Day number two, it is time for fries again. <laughs> Today we're gonna make animal style fries. Like these typical ones from In-N-Out. I've actually never eaten them from In-N-Out, but I'm ready to eat them right now. At home. I saw ASMR Fun eat these and honestly, it just looked so good. I'm just a sucker for fries with cheese and a lot of sauce. So I couldn't be bothered. I just put some frozen fries into the oven. Look, it's the holy onion. <laughs> I 
mean, this is also not like super hard to do. I think the only hard part about this is that you have to caramelize onions. I added the onions into the pan and then I put some brown sugar on top and just like gradually I added more and more and just stirred, stirred, stirred. And I honestly had the feeling it was going great so far. So I was very optimistic. I was like, damn, I'm really good at caramelizing these onions though. And normally you use pickle relish for this. Isn't relish just cut pickles? There are pickles in there and I cut pickles. Then I'm gonna make the sauce, which is just a mix out of mayonnaise, ketchup, and a little bit of vinegar. In my case, a lot of vinegar. <laughs> We need cheese on God! Respectfully. That's not gonna melt. Maybe we're gonna put it in the microwave for a couple of seconds. And then I put these very sad looking caramelized onions on top. I'm not gonna lie, they look horrible. <laughs> I think at the end it kind of caramelized too much. Maybe it also burnt a little bit. I don't know, it just... It didn't feel right. Then I just put the sauce on top and there we have our animal style fries. Yeah, I, it was okay. The only problem was I just added way too much vinegar, which made it like super sweet. And then also the caramelized onions were way too sweet and this whole thing was just sweetness. So I know what I'm gonna do better next time, but this time it wasn't a huge success. It was still edible. I still ate all of it. Day number three, we're actually gonna face a little bit of a bigger challenge this time. Today we're gonna make rosé tteokbokki, which is tteokbokki, but just very um, creamy. I saw a young eating this, I hope I pronounced their name right, and also Bookie, love Bookie, she's amazing, and honestly this rose tteokbokki, it just looks so fucking good. I've been craving this for forever, but I never made it because I just know how much work it's gonna be. And I mean, tteokbokki itself is not like super much, work but there are these special kind of white rice noodles in there which I can't get anywhere obviously they don't sell online like dried because you have to make them completely fresh the only chance you could actually get them is at your local Asian supermarket if they make them there so I always knew that I would have to make them myself and that always stopped me from trying rose tteokbokki but for this video I faced the challenge this sounds very dramatic and it kind of is <laughs> I have my little rice cakes. I'm not gonna be making these in this video because I already have enough to do with the white rice noodles. So I'm just gonna put them in water and just let them soak for a little bit before I add them to the dish. And then we're gonna get to making the rice noodles. We need rice flour and tapioca starch. It's very important that your tapioca starch is version B. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> and then you need water and that is it. That is all you need for the rice noodles. I'm gonna mix together the rice flour and the tapioca starch and I'm gonna add the water. Water. That is literally it. That's not the hard part though. The hard part is steaming this. I don't have a steamer, but I have a rice cooker with a steamer included. The problem is my rice cooker is already very small. So if I put another pot in there, then the rice noodles are gonna be super small and tiny. So I need all the space I can get. But then the other problem is obviously there were holes in my steaming device. <laughs> so all the steam gets through, obviously. But this was not good for me because I have very very, very liquid um, rice liquid. And then obviously it would just, you know, yeah, you see the problem. So I just took a baking sheet and just folded it over this and just cut it around. And I was just hoping that it was still like, you know, let the steam get through. So then you pour the rice flour mixture in there. And obviously you don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin. You want it like evenly steamed. And it was kind of hard to do that on such an uneven base because of the baking sheet, obviously. I also prepared a very oily cutting board because obviously they're very sticky and then you need to coat everything with oil so it doesn't stick together. Is this it? <laughs> that looks horrible. <laughs> Guys, what is this? <laughs> it's a little, you know, thick. It's super thick, actually. <laughs> For my second one, I knew that I'm gonna put less rice flour mixture in there because I don't want it to be as thick as the first one, obviously. It took me some tries to kind of figure out what's the best way to do this. God, what the f <laughs> This is not it. Look at the thickness of my second one. I think that looks... Great, actually. Ooh. Look. 
the last one was so good and so thin. I mean, it, it could actually be even bigger. The third one was really... What the fuck is this? I'm gonna cut them now. Yes, thick noodles! Why are they not see-through, though? The ones in the video were so see-through. <laughs> oh my god, look at this beautiful rice noodle! That one has a little hole in it and is very thick towards the end. Maybe I'm just gonna cut the end off. <laughs> that one also has a very big clump on here. I'm still gonna eat it anyway. <gasps> yes! Perfect one! I can't believe I made these! And here we have my rice noodles. I gotta admit, I am actually very proud of myself. I think I also have to tell you that I'm not very skilled with cooking. If you're new to this channel, I'm a mess. I'm a catastrophe. So that actually is pretty good for me. Then I could finally get into the rosé topoki. I cut some garlic, I cut some onions, and I also bought these little sausages. And then I just pan fried all of these three ingredients. Then we add a full package of whipped cream <laughs> Oh, I consume so much whipped cream in this video. And then obviously we have our gochujang paste. Add as much as you like. I think I added a little bit too much because I'm also a little bit of a pussy when it comes to spice. I think it was still like edible. Then I just stirred it around a little bit and then I immediately added the rice cakes. And I just let it boil and simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. I think you can just let it simmer until the rice cakes are soft. Hello? And until it kind of like forms a thick sauce and it's not that liquidy anymore. This is what it looks like. I also added an egg. You can also add two eggs, honey. Whatever you like. And then I added my rice noodles. Don't add them too early because obviously they are freshly made and don't need to cook for too long. Actually, they don't need to cook at all. Just put them in there at the end. But obviously, if you have uncooked rice noodles and not these type of noodles, then you have to cook them first. And then, of course, the last ingredient, which is very important, is cheese. I added cheddar cheese. In this case, you can add whatever cheese you like. <laughs> it's all one color. <laughs> and there we have it, my rosé topoki. And I am so excited about this dish. It looks so good. Oh my god, my rice noodles in there, they be looking real sexy. And I can also tell you, I absolutely love this. The rice noodles were so good in there. I did not expect <laughs> that they're gonna taste good. I mean... I mean, it's just, I don't know, I just have so low expectations for me when it comes to cooking that I surprise myself when I actually succeed with this. I think I wouldn't have changed anything about this. It was absolutely perfect. Maybe it was a little bit too spicy, but I could handle it. Does it taste old? <laughs> it doesn't. It tastes good, actually. Yeah? I know. <laughs> I loved it that much. I even gave you a little cheers with my mango milk, which I definitely needed though because it do be very spicy. On day number four, I know, before you say anything, I'm very sorry that I have to include another Nikocado avocado video, but he recently made these blue taki noodles and I th I w when I saw this, I just knew I have to make this. This is like a Naomi dish. The worst part about this though is that I had to watch the whole Nikocado video in hopes he would tell me the recipe, but he didn't. <laughs> But that just meant I had to figure the recipe out myself. It's basically just noodles and food coloring and takis. So. <laughs> and probably a lot of cheese, but you will see. So I thought maybe I can just make the cheese sauce. I also made my other mukbang video and just like make a little bit of a cheese cream sauce out of it so I can just put it on all the noodles. I love the smell of melted butter. <laughs> So I just melted some butter in a pot and I also added some flour. Then I added some cream, as I said, just to make it more saucy. And I didn't want to add too much cream, so I also added some milk. It's cheese time! I'm so happy! I missed my cheese so much. I also added some paprika powder for some, you know, flavor and just some salt and pepper, just like the necessities. Okay guys, are we ready to add off? Oh, we gotta look at the takis for reference. We actually have a pretty good match already. <laughs> and now we are also going to put a little bit of the food coloring just into the noodles. Wow, that looks so unhealthy and toxic. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. <laughs> just a little bit of butter. <laughs> All right, everyone, it's dinner time. <laughs> oh, she's a little thick. Ooh, yes, honey. Come on, bye-bye. And now all we gotta do is garnish it with some takis. And then 
everything is complete. And there we have them, the beautiful blue tucky noodles. <laughs> I mean, it's cheese cream sauce with noodles and takis. I, I mean, it, it can only taste good. Obviously, only if you like all of these ingredients, but for me, it was fabulous. This looks like you're on a SpongeBob party. SpongeBob is yellow. <laughs> Vincent's gonna try. Ooh, submarine. SpongeBob in your mouth. <laughs> SpongeBob is yellow. I mean, it just tastes like Taki, and I really like Taki, so. <clears throat> Do you think too much food coloring is toxic? Depends if it's natural food coloring. I don't think this is natural. I dig this. Out. Day number five, I wanted to try something a little different. So I picked these three types of ASMR mukbang type of foods. Did I say type twice? First, we have sea grapes. I see these everywhere and for a reason because they do make a nice sound for eating. I've never tried them before, but I will in this video. Then for my main course, I'm gonna be trying these edible stones. I think they look so amazing and I'm just wondering, will they taste good? I mean, it's candy, isn't it? I just hoped it's not gonna be licorice or something gross. And for dessert, I'm gonna be having this amazing edible chocolate. I also ordered this online. It was kind of hard to get because obviously I also wanted like high quality chalk. I don't really know about the quality differences when it comes to edible chalk, but I kind of got a little bit into the topic and I didn't just want to buy a badly rated chalk, edible chalk on Amazon. The sea grapes I actually found on Amazon, they were like dehydrated and then all I had to do was get them out and pour some water on them and just, you know, let it soak for a little bit and then they just like got all squishy and huge. Here's my chalk. Just wanted to show you my chalk. And here are my stones. <laughs> I got one kilogram. <laughs> Let's just hope they're gonna taste good. <laughs> All right, here is my whole dinner for today. My sea grapes, my chalk, and my stones. It's my dinner. <laughs> I mean, I honestly don't know what I expected, but this tastes exactly like the ocean. I mean, it's sea grapes, so. But I love the sound. I gotta admit, I am not able to eat more. I'm very, very, very sorry, but this almost made me gag. Let's try this one. Mm, I think this is a dried fruit and a lot of sugar. A little nah. It's like a chocobon, just cheaper. <laughs> this one's better. <coughs> Sorry. Green one. It's like an M&M. Just cheaper and not as good. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's marzipan. What is it called in English? Marzipan? Love it. Chalk. As far as I know, it's actually um, beneficial for your health. Not every chalk. Not the chalk you actually draw with. Like you can buy at the supermarket or... This is some very high quality chalk. Let's try. <laughs> Make sure to not breathe in the powder. It 100% tastes exactly like you would imagine. <laughs> but I somehow expected it to taste a little different, like more edible. Vincent, I got some food for ya. Don't hide, I know you're there. I think the sea grapes were amazing and oh the chalk. What do you want me to try? Everything, whatever you want to try, everything. Did you eat this entire thing? Yeah, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Would you advise me to? I'm just the cameraman. <laughs> I'm Benny from Camera 2. <laughs> <laughs> Out of breathing, I'm just... <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Why is that high order? Apricot. Sweet apricot. <laughs> yeah, it's very sweet. Sugar coating apricot. That's gonna be my next single. <gasps> Actually, no, my next single is gonna be Naomi. <laughs> Out on June 11th. That was so nice, thank you so much. Always here to make you dinner. And day number six, we're gonna be baking everyone. Mm -hmm. Right here we have Melanie eating this strawberry whipped cream cake. Ichigo no shoto keki. 
Mm. I hate baking even more than cooking, so this really was the worst challenge out of all of them for me. But I still wanted to, as I said, challenge myself. So I looked up this recipe online and uh, here are all of my ingredients. Let's just pray together this will work out because I will spend the whole day making this. <laughs> First off, we need flour, we need baking powder, we need baking soda or n not natron natron i think it's baking soda right i always get this mixed up it's very confusing for a german person a little bit of salt and we're gonna mix it all together and here we have our main star of this recipe bailey strawberry and cream we're gonna be using this a lot i also had to make a little taste test mm. <laughs> cheers <laughs> i didn't even drink it <laughs> So we put the flour mixture to the side and now we're gonna get to another thing. We're gonna add butter and sugar and we're just gonna whisk it together for like three to four minutes. Whisk the butter, whisk it harder like no other. Melt the sugar, yeah, whisk the butter for too long. Woo! I hate baking, I don't know why I'm baking lately. Where's the butter? Yeah, where's the butter for too long? Break it down. After we beat this butter real good, we're gonna add one egg and two egg whites. Then we're also gonna add some vanilla and we're gonna just mix it all together. Then we're gonna add some sour cream. And then I sadly realized that I shouldn't have mixed the butter and the sugar for that long. So I just had to have a little Bailey strawberry and cream break to motivate myself again <laughs> to keep going with the recipe because I didn't know if I could keep going. I didn't know if like the fucked up buttercream just fucked the whole recipe up and it was kind of a risk but I also didn't want to throw the other thing away so I just kept going in the end. And I'm gonna add the Baileys and milk and the flour mixture just like gradually into this fucked up butter sour cream. Thing. <laughs> we're gonna be having three sponges but sadly I just have these two sponge forms so I have to make these two and then after that I can make the third one it's a little time-consuming but I didn't want to buy a third one just for that and so I know there's Bailey's in there but will you promise me to try it <laughs> <laughs> And here they are, beautiful, absolutely amazing. I really didn't have much hope at this point anymore. <laughs> so I just baked this for like 22 minutes on I think 175 degrees. And while that was baking, I got my bacon. <laughs> I cut my strawberries, which I'm gonna add later. I also made the whipped cream, which is super easy. It's basically just whipping cream, you know, whipping the cream, whipping the whipping cream. And then we're gonna add the whipped cream into this spritz thing. Oh my god, I really do not know my baking vocabulary. I don't even know what it's called in German. Spritztülle? Oh, decorating tube. I don't know what these brown spots are. Maybe it is actually from the butter, which I beat for too long. We did all the preparation. Now it's time to put it all together. So I placed one sponge layer right at the bottom. And then I also cut this kind of cake foil. We need a little bit of support, obviously. But right here, you just see me kind of stacking up this cake, adding the strawberries and then filling all the gaps in with some whipped cream. I also didn't know how much I could add. I was kind of scared the whipped cream will be empty before I can finish the cake. So it was kind of hard to measure this. And also I'm not like really good at decorating at all. So I'm very sorry if you're triggered by my placement of the strawberry because I know people will be. <laughs> but that's just the Sagittarius doing her best. And actually the whipped cream was just enough like just and after refrigerating it for like 30 more minutes the moment of truth has come and my dear broccolis it did not collapse we can be very happy about that then i cut it and now that i'm looking at it i realized that the cutting really dragged down the whole cake <laughs> the flavor was immaculate i, I mean <laughs> it's just strawberries and whipped cream and a little bit of cake but i love it that's just my type of cake good cocoa.
Wird Kacke? And do you taste the alcohol? No. See? That's not what happens I when you taste alcohol. Fell. I think you will collapse any second. Next time, I want to make more whipped cream and put more strawberries in there. How do you like my decoration? This is as good as it's gonna get because my Sagittarius mean? brain cannot decorate. <laughs> decor decorate. All right, everyone, let's get to day seven, which is 100% gonna be my most challenging recipe out of all of them. So I saw a lot of mukbangers eat these cheese balls. Right here we have the example from Fume. I think she's called Fume. Maybe it's Fumey. We also have Solgi eating these. I think a lot of people ate these cheese balls. They're very popular. And I thought as I mastered the frying part in my last video when I fried the corn dogs, I'm like obviously very good at frying now, but I could be more wrong. <laughs> First of all, I got the cheddar cheese powder. We're gonna need that for like throwing our cheese balls in there. It's gonna be like the seasoning. I also added some garlic, I added some paprika powder, some oregano, and of course salt and pepper. Then we're gonna be making the dough. And I think that is actually the part where I fucked up the most. I did follow a recipe, from the internet but i think this recipe was not it <laughs> so first of all normally i think people mostly use this otogi glutinous rice donut mix donut powder and then all you have to do is just like add one egg and a little bit of water or milk and then it's already perfect but i did order it it just still didn't arrive so i had to kind of improvise and the recipe i found online also said that i could also make it with just glutinous rice flour i tried <laughs> So I'm gonna mix the glutinous rice flour with normal flour, a little bit of salt, a little bit of baking soda, and also a little bit of sugar. Then we're gonna add some butter and some water, and that's actually gonna be it. We're just gonna be kneading it all together. The problem with this was that I did not add enough water, even though I added as much water as it was in the recipe. So I kind of had to like add more water to actually form a dough, because just with the recipe online, it did, no, this would not have formed a dough. I was kneading until infinity, like honestly it was horrible my arm still hurts and then we had to let the dough rest for 30 minutes and while I let it rest I started making the burinkle sauce for this sauce I just followed Solgi's recipe she showed it in her video but it was not like super precise like you could just see what she was doing but she didn't tell you any measurements first you want to add some normal cream cheese just like one or two spoons who knows <laughs> then you're gonna add this whipped cream and this was already sweet and the whole point of the sauce is to be sweet oh no mir ist mein rhinestone abgefallen und ich glaube es ist in meine soße gefallen then a little bit of lemon juice to give it a little bit more lemon flavor and then I also added some of this self-made syrup from my mom. Then I'm gonna whisk it all together and that is it. That is the sauce. Then we're gonna cut our cheese. As always, I didn't find like a block of mozzarella. I only found these cheese strings, which do work very well though. And then I'm gonna be starting to form bowls. I'm just gonna be taking the dough. I'm gonna be, you know, making it flat putting the cheese in there and then just like wrapping it all up. I also added a little bit of sugar because Solgi also added sugar in her video. I think you normally would add condensed milk, but I didn't have condensed milk, so I added sugar. And there we have my cheese balls. They do already look very different than they looked in Solgi's video. They be looking a little more white. Hers looked more tan, but I think that's because she used the Otogi rice flour mix. And now comes the scary part, the frying. I just put them in there and you're supposed to like fry them for three to five minutes until they turn golden brown and they rise up. So far it was all going great but I gotta say I really underestimated that because I had this problem popping up. My cheese balls started popping and then I had oil flying everywhere. Hot oil. Guys we had an accident. One pop. So now she's leaking and she was leaking and I burned everything. Spam some F in chat for this cheese ball. <gasps> Ow, uh, they're all popping! Why are they popping? I just got second so degree burns. Yeah, yeah. Well, next ones. Guys, don't burn yourself with hot oil. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done with 
this shit. Guys, I know I have second degree burns, but we're still gonna carry on because I didn't do this shit for nothing. So I'm just gonna put my very tiny little cheese balls <laughs> into this mixture now. <laughs> That's a lot of powder on there. <laughs> Beautiful. What the fuck? Well, let's eat it. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it's a hole. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to be this crunchy. <coughs> Are they worth the pain? You stupid. Yes, that was the cheese ball journey. I also really have to say the whole frying thing Please be more careful than I was burning yourself with hot frying oil is nothing to joke about Like it can actually be very serious. I can be glad that it wasn't that bad for me I mean it did hurt like hell. It was still like manageable I didn't have to go to the doctor, but normally if you get like frying oil burns Like it's actually very normal to go to a doctor or even the hospital like immediately depends on how bad the burns are obviously and I mean I was joking in the video like oh my god I got second degree burns ha 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 but it was actually like very very painful I just knew I had to finish this video and I know I should have maybe like stopped I should have taken a moment to breathe and to just like realize my situation and I feel like because I was filming and I just wanted to get this video done I didn't even notice the pain from the oil burns when I finished the video I realized how much it hurts like I was just so much in the moment and in the video I didn't even think of the pain on my hand like it was it was really stupid and my final verdict about the cheese balls well it was definitely not worth all the pain and all the struggle they were way too hard my dough was kind of I think it was just too stiff and kind of cracking very easily also my cheese balls were very small in the end like they didn't even rise maybe it's because I didn't add enough baking soda maybe I should have put the cheese into the freezer beforehand because I think that also helps with the leaking cheese like it will not leak that fast but I think my dough was just completely fucked up anyway so please do not follow this recipe I'm telling you that for your own safety and that everyone was my seven days straight mukbang video let me know if there are any any recipes, any mukbang foods, any ASMR foods you would want me to try. I actually really enjoy making these videos because I mean I do learn a lot about myself when it comes to cooking and baking and I also get to know and taste completely new recipes and dishes I never tried before. I'm still very proud about this rosé topoki I gotta say. That was the shit. That was hands down the best thing I've ever made probably. <laughs> That's it for this video. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media which is Naomi John on Instagram Naomi John on TikTok and the Naomi John on Twitter oh yeah I actually got a burger waiting for me I think it's already cold and Vincent is also waiting for me Vincent and my burger thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye stream Naomi when it comes out June 11th <laughs>